Hi there, my name is Warbass. You are currently looking at a Jurorack case that I refer to as my B case. I recently put out a kind of longer walkthrough on what I refer to as my A case. I'll put a little link uh, up here for that. It is just out of frame over there. And in that video, I talked about how I wasn't gonna cover this case because I was still working on uh, some of the last uh, HP refining, uh, some of the modules that I just wasn't 100% sure about um, keeping in here yet. It's got a very different focus, this case. It's very drum heavy, given, of course, the Erica Synths module standing here at the bottom. Um, but instead of holding off and waiting until I have this uh, more refined and in a place where I am more happy with it, I thought I would bring you folks along uh, on a specific test. Uh, and that specific test today is about 100 grit, both of these. Um, I've had uh, this 100 grit for a long time. It's one of my favorite filters uh, in Eurorack. It is uh, an incredible distortion. It's super playable, absolutely crazy. Uh, the only, only downside is, is that it's mono. Even though there's two ins, you only get a mono out, and those ins are kind of feedback against one another and aren't meant to be a left-right pair. So I actually had a conversation with Eric, uh, Schlappy of Schlappy, Schlappy of uh, Schlappy Engineering, um, and said, "Hey, have you ever done uh, dual hundred grits for stereo?" And he said he had. Uh, and I had a question about uh, what I could use potentially as a macro controller and what the expected voltage range of these knobs were. And it turns out um, that I think Lapsus will work uh, really well for that. So I'm going to use the Lapsus OS down here from Noise Engineering uh, and four channels, two outs uh, to macro control. Uh, dual 100 grits to make what I'm hoping is going to be the best uh, stereo distortion and stereo filter that I possibly can. Um, and we'll do a little comparison. So I'm going to set up a patch now that has uh, some drums, a macro controller over the dual 100 grits, and uh, a mix setup where we can toggle between mono uh, and stereo and see if it's really worth um, all that HP. I have a hypothesis that it absolutely will be. Um, so stay tuned and uh, we'll get right into that. Okay, now we have a patch set up here where the sample drum is triggering the LXR elixir. Um, the kick drum is being uh, malted to be used as uh, CV for side chaining. Uh, we've got our kind of other uh, lower drums also on a single uh, mono channel here into the endorphins cockpit, uh, and then hi hats and clap uh, on a stereo channel right there. The entire mix is going then through uh, Golden Master, then into both filters. We've got ST mix set up where we can listen to the mono mix or stereo mix. Ooh, that's loud. Um, then the whole thing uh, is going over into my A case uh, to get recorded. So we'll, we'll start that recording now. Um, and first, let's listen to this little loop in mono and see how it sounds. Maybe just for a fair uh, comparison, we'll do just kick uh, at first, and we'll go through um, stereo, and, or mono, and then stereo, and let's see how it sounds. So we'll start mono, and then we'll switch over to stereo. And now let's bring in the stereo mix, and kill the mono.
sounds fine. Like, there's nothing wrong with that at all. I think it sounds still really good. But does it sound better than that? I, don't, I think that sounds way better. So there's obviously some uh, differences in what's going on internally. Um, I actually posted a picture of this on Reddit a couple of days ago, and someone mentioned uh, asked if I had adjusted the uh, resonance trimmer on the back, which is not something that I've I've done yet. And I think you can hear that, especially in the left channel. The squealing is a lot faster, and that might be related to a difference in the feedback uh, that's happening. Um, or an adjustment with one of the trimmers on the back that might need to get dialed in a little bit. But I think those differences in general between the two channels uh, are really what give it a whole lot more life. I don't think the mono sounds bad. Like, I think 100 grit in a mono filter so sounds really, really nice, especially if you want to just like drive a kick through it and you're going to put that in this, most of the time in the center of your mix anyway. But for the entire sound... Uh, I don't know. It just sounds so, so nice. Um, again, that's that mono. Let's bring that. Like, that's great. But that's better. If you don't if you don't hear the difference um put headphones on uh, find good headphones if you have them um and listen to this back uh, through headphones you know this might not um uh, sound that different at all if you're playing it through uh, you know your phone speakers or computer speakers um so try this through headphones uh let me know if if you hear the difference that i'm also hearing and um f frankly in my goal to refine this case to be focused on what is kind of the opposite of that case which is like very looping ambient soundscapey wall of sound um this is really meant to be uh very manually sequenced extremely distorted uh, and really focused around drums to try and complement what's going on in that case and it's going to take a lot of practice i think to get these cases to work well together um you know i've done a couple videos so far where i actually play this case into the looper on that case instead of recording off of a mic or recording a sample i sample this entire case into my a case which is has been a lot of fun i think something that needs a lot more uh, exploration the one thing that i really like um right now these these two cables as i mentioned are going over into my kind of end of chain 
for the case, which I did clear out some of the uh, color that that Libre Legio is adding. Again, if you haven't seen that video um, where I talk about kind of my uh, in-case mastering um, that's going on over there. The really nice thing about Jumblehenge in that case, and maybe I'll cut in a little shot of it, is that you can uh, grab an external in. So I just have this case, these left and right cables, which again, if you're working in stereo like I am so much, it can be really, really handy to have a bunch of these um, black and reds so that you can trace uh, left and right audio signals easily around uh, your cases, especially if you've got a larger setup or a, a wider setup like I have. Um, so these are just going right into the external in on Jumble Henge. And then I get the benefit from all of the same end of chain stuff that's happening over there. Uh, Libre Legio, Shackmat High Pass, uh, and then in, onto the SD card, which is uh, recording all the audio that you're hearing from the actual synth itself. So uh, in terms of what I'm gonna do with this case right now, uh, I don't see a reason why I would go away from this. I think my search for a distortion that I love, that is also a, a great filter and really end of this case signal processor, this is great. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Um, I think one thing I am going to do really quick, um, I might adjust the camera angle here, is actually take this mix and malt it again before going through 100 grit and run it through guillotine, which I have over there, which is another uh, stereo distortion in the one, in one U format with just a, a single knob for um, the application level. Um, and I wanna see how that performs uh, against 100 grit. I don't think it's gonna be exactly a fair comparison, to be frank, um, but I think it's worth hearing two stereo distortions side by side. Um, so just give me a minute to, to repatch and uh, we'll try that out before any of this video. Okay, I've changed the patch uh, a little bit. We have the exact same, uh, we have the exact same drum loop uh, and setup on Elixir. Um, Lapsus Oz way over here is doing the same thing. 100 grit I've adjusted just a tiny bit to try and make the characteristic of the distortion and the filter match a little closer to guillotine. Both are then going through axis here so I can cross fade uh, between them. And so let's hear 100 grit again. That's in stereo mode, uh, by the way. And now we can fade to guillotine. Under grits. Let's switch guillotine into its kind of low color mode as it's described here on the panel and fade back over. That sounds still really good. For one U, like, incredibly good. still think 100 grit pair is a little better. Let's try something in the high band now. Still on the 100 grits. Let's go back to guillotine. Go back to 100 grit. It's a little squealy over there, but I think that's kind of nice at times. And then back in the middle. Back to guillotine. All right, so in general, like guillotine is extremely good for its size and its capability. You will notice that, as I mentioned in the previous video, it has no like unity gain. All the way down is zero signal passing through. It's a very traditional amp in that sense uh, and kind of a hard clipping gain as they uh, describe it in the uh, the manual I think um, so I, I wish that it was just a little more playable like 100 grit but in no way am I going to I, I think change this dual 100 grit setup in in my B case and at the same time for my A case given everything else that's happening here and everything else we're trying to do in this case the guillotine and the one U size 
at this HP. Like this is incredible for its size, uh, given that it's stereo. And even that it has something here in terms of uh, the color switch to give it some more filtering characteristics is um, frankly kind of outstanding. So still highly recommend guillotine because uh, I mean, it sounds great. Great. I just like this more. We can go back to mono under grid and compare that. There's mono under grid versus stereo guillotine. That's Stereo hundred grid again. I think that's it. I'm keeping both. Stereo guillotine in the uh, A case, dual hundred grids for stereo in the B case. I don't think it's really fair to compare a mono distortion and a stereo distortion. Um, you know, guillotine or sorry, hundred grid on its own mono, uh, extremely playable. So many more features. Obviously, it's a filter. Uh, as well, and just even without the distortion, it's a really, really nice quality filter. So there's so much more you're getting with the hundred grit. Um, but I think this is, I think this is a setup that's probably going to stay. So thanks for watching along uh, with my little experiment. Um, stay tuned for more continued adventures in optimizing uh, this B case, uh, and who knows, maybe changing some stuff over here occasionally. But we'll see. See you next time.